Hello and welcome to Murat's Kitchen. Today we're making one of my favorite foods and that's curing salmon. Curing is the generic term to indicate brines, pickling, or a dry cure. And it could be just as simple as using salt alone. But when we add all the different spices and sweetness, we get a depth of flavor to the final product. So we've put brown sugar, salt, cumin, oregano, and we're going to add some ginger and some nutmeg and you want to have a nice balance of all those spices and that's why when I'm curing I like to use a scale instead of measuring cups I like to have precision in the spices and especially in the balance of salt and sugar to get that that proper curing that you need the salt for but to balance the saltiness with the sugar so some types of foods and some types of techniques definitely require you to measure instead of using a measuring cup. And here now we've added uh, onion powder and garlic powder and ground black pepper. Okay, after we have our curing mix, have our salmon fillet. Here I've used a sockeye salmon, but you can use Atlantic salmon if you like as well. You want to leave the skin on, but you want to make sure that you cut the skin. It tends to be leathery, so it'll be hard for the cure to get through. So we cut little slits for the curing to be able to get through, and the curing of the salmon will start on both sides to make sure that you have that perfect uh, taste and the right combination of, of uh, curing on both sides of the salmon. Curing just means that it draws out all the liquids and it it starts to dry the salmon and and that's where the cooking starts. It denatures the salmon basically and it's a cold uh, quote-unquote cooking. Now we have a cheesecloth, we put some of the curing mixture at the bottom uh, and then we're gonna we put the rest on top tapering the curing mixture off as you get down to the narrow part of the tail. We wrap that in a cheesecloth and we put that in for 48 hours. And now we're, I'm going to unwrap the cheesecloth. Look how delicious that looks. You need to wash off the brine. I don't like to just put it under the tap hose as water can um, start to splash everywhere. This is a lot more gentler to wash off the curing mix and then any larger chunks you can just use a spoon very gently so you don't break the flesh. I used almost four cups of uh, cold water to wash off the brine and you want to pat dry, you want that to be very dry before you put that into the fridge for the final curing process and you want to do the same thing on both sides of the salmon. Leaving the skin on keeps everything in, uh, keeps the skin and everything, uh, the flesh intact and it's nice for presentation as well. Make sure that you have a very sharp knife as you slice the salmon. We put the salmon actually back into the fridge for a third day to form this nice dry uh, part of the, of the flesh called a pellicle. So in total, we had it in for 72 hours. And then you want to have a nice sharp knife so you can cut these beautiful thin slices for presentation. As you can see, Making cured salmon home is very easy, takes very little ingredients, local ingredients, and the flavors are just out of this world, and it'll taste usually better than what you can buy in the store. Try it today. I know you won't be disappointed, and your family and friends are going to thank you and come over often to try all your delicious, delicious variety of cured, uh, of cured salmons. This is just one mix that you can use for a cured salmon, but there's literally hundreds of different types. I encourage you to check out what else you can make and stick to Morass Kitchen because we'll be making more cured salmon with different kinds of toppings to give you all those variety of flavors. Thank you for joining me in Morass Kitchen. I look forward to seeing you again. Please share, comment, and subscribe, and tell all your friends. Thank you. See you next time.